My mind began to to drift today and early this morning. Early, I was talking to God, and and I could not help but say to God, God, in all of my weakness and in all of my in all of my unfaithfulness at times, and at times when I know that I could have and should have done better, you've still been God, and you've still showed up. This song that was sang by Crystal a few minutes ago, the words leaped out at me today, and uh, I could not help but remember the words of that song, because even in times when I didn't remember God, and when I wasn't as faithful as I should have been. Now let, let me tell you something today. We have this unique thing as human beings that we think we think that God ought to be faithful to us no matter what. Well, that went over like a lead balloon, didn't it? But we think God ought to show up on the spur of the moment. We think God ought to be there whenever we call His name. And I, I'm not here today, I'm really not, not going to preach about faithfulness to God, but I could and I will at a given time. I believe in faithfulness to God. I believe we ought to strive to be faithful to God. Does anybody believe that with me today? I believe you ought to strive to be faithful in every phase of your life to the house of God, to the kingdom of God. Faithful in your attendance, faithful in giving of God your talent and your time, your abilities, faithful to God in giving of your money, faithful in God. I read of a, a scripture just this morning, said it is required of a steward to be found faithful. That's the requirement that God put upon us. He talked about in the Word of God, faithful people in the Word of God. He called Moses a faithful man. He called Abraham a faithful man, the father of the faithful. So what I've come to tell you today is that we ought to be, and we should be, and we need to strive to be faithful unto God. I could preach a whole message on that this morning, but I want to talk to you today not about our faithfulness because none of us have been as faithful to God as we should have been. I didn't say none of you. I said none of us have been as faithful to God as we should have been. But in spite of our humanity, and in spite of our failure, and in spite of the, the things in our life that we have come short of, God has been faithful to us. Hallelujah. That's the kind of God we serve. Here's what, here's what Paul said. And I love this. It's in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. You ought to underline it in your Bible. Because he's talking to the church at Corinth and this is what he said. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God, somebody say, but God is faithful. Come on, say it with me. But God is faithful. No matter what kind of temptation you, you're going through, no matter what kind of trial you are, you're going through, God is faithful. I remember a, a man by the name of Johnny James. You, some of you may remember him. Some of you were here and some were not. But Johnny James preached in this church years ago. He is a, he is a walking Bible. He is a, a, a an older, Black gentleman that has, I'm telling you, his mind is unbelievable. He can walk up here and quote the Koran or quote the Bible or quote the encyclopedia. I mean, when he's preaching, he can say in Britannica Encyclopedia, uh, volume so-and-so, book so-and-so, chapter so-and-so, page so-and-so, paragraph three. And that's the way he tells his story. But let me tell you, he preached here one time, God's butt is bigger than your butt. Sorry, but that's what he preached. He had me nervous for a while. And he started talking about all the excuses. I would, God, but. I would, but. I, but here's what he said. God's but is bigger. Because here it said, but God is faithful. He's faithful. He's bigger than your temptation. He's bigger than your situation. He's bigger than your problem. And guess what? He always shows up 
right on time. I'm here to preach to somebody on this Sunday morning. If you don't believe what I'm about to tell you, then you don't have a clear vision of God. Because I can tell you as a witness that when I've needed Him the most, He has never let me down. And with every temptation, He has always made a way of escape. The Bible said He's faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, that you are able, but with every temptation He will make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Somebody shout with me, God is faithful. I got to studying the Word of the Lord on that, on that word, faithfulness. And I got to looking about what the Lord, what the Word of God says about God. You can take it all the way back to the beginning. You know, what kind of God is it that will bring a nation out of bondage? Open seas. Rain food out of the sky. Feed them, clothe them. Send water gushing out of a rock that would that would quench the thirst of three to five million people. The blessings of God on them. And every time you look up, they're turning their back on God. They're, they're, they're grumbling from the moment they escaped their bondage. They had no more got out of bondage and before they could even cross a Red Sea that they were saying, we wish you'd have just left us in Egypt. We'd have rather died at the hands of Pharaoh. They were grumbling and complaining and, and, and then at times turning their back totally on God. Not believing what God had done and what God had said. He promised them Canaan. He promised them blessing. He gave them a cloud during the day and a fire during the night to guide them every step of their, of their journey. He was good to them. He healed their bodies. He was a God of mercy to them. And yet you look up, and while God is talking to His man on a mountain, they're gathering up things to build a golden calf, and they're worshiping an idol God. They were not faithful to Him, but God remained faithful to them. Deuteronomy said it this way in chapter 7 and verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, He is God. And then it said this, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love Him, and keep His commandments to a thousand generations. Did He not tell Abraham, if you will follow Me, I'll make your kids like the sand of the sea and the stars of the heaven. You'll be blessed above all nations. You remember that promise that God gave to Abraham? Well, let me tell you, in 2018, on the last Sunday, He's still holding to His covenant. He's still standing on His promise. Don't you mess with Israel. I'm going to tell you something. Iran, Iraq, Syria, whoever, don't you mess with Israel because Israel has been God's people for thousands of years and remain God's people today. It doesn't matter how far they've drifted. It doesn't matter what all they've done. There was times that God got sick of them. And God said one time, He said, you are like a Backslidden heifer. You backed away from me. And I don't know. At times he's threatened to kill them. It was only Moses that said, God, if you're going to kill them, you kill me with them. But God would back up and remember and remember his covenant with Israel. And I want to tell you on this Sunday morning that he has been faithful. And that's the kind of God you're serving today. I am not Physical, nor Israel, 
an Israelite by my birth, but I am by my second birth because I have been grafted in. I have come to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and He has made me His child. And every promise that goes to physical Israel goes to spiritual Israel. And here we are in 2018, the closing moments of time, and we can look over our shoulder and say, God, I'm sorry. I didn't do what I said I was going to do. I didn't. I wasn't the man I said I was going to be. I didn't live the way I said I was going to live. But you have been faithful to me. Paul said to the church, he said, But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. John said it. I love this scripture. I just got to reading about the faithfulness of God. John in his writing said this. I want you to say this with me. Matter of fact, put this on the screen. First John chapter 1 verse 9. Here's what the Lord said. Here's what the Word of God said. That John writing, he said this. If we confess our sins, everybody say it with me. If we confess our sins, what does those next few words say? He's faithful. I was thinking about that this morning. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm not preaching to perfect people today. I've never been able to pastor perfect people. And guess what? You don't have a perfect pastor. If you're looking for one, you better look elsewhere. I'm not him. I'm being honest with you. But neither are you. There is in our life failure. Oh, you say, well, I remember when God delivered me, and that's all good. Listen to me right now. You may not do the physical things that we call sin. You may not have been in the bar all night last night. and You, you may not be all zipped up on drugs this morning. and You, you, you may not have a six-pack in your car. I, 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 I'm just saying, you may not be doing those things. But we have to fight. We have to fight daily because there are inward things that work on us. Jealousy, envy, strife, hatred, malice. Things you don't see. Things that you can walk in on a Sunday morning and say, Hallelujah. And everybody thinks things are good. But inside you're seething. And it's, and it's, and it's, and it's like a cancer gnawing on the inside of you. See, those things have to be taken care of too. That's why Jesus said to the Pharisees, you look good, but you aren't good. You look good. Your, your whited sepulchers on the outside, but inside of you are full of dead men's bones. You're like the cup that's all washed on the outside, but you got some old nasty grains of coffee down on the inside that you hadn't washed lately. You got some stuff that you need to take care of. We're not perfect people. We get mad. We say things. We do things. Our attitude gets wrong. Our spirit gets wrong. Come on now. I'm preaching to you this morning. We, we get to that place that we don't pray like we ought to pray. And we haven't given like we ought to give. And we don't love like we ought to love. And we don't forgive like we ought to forgive. And we harbor grudges and things in our heart. I'm going to preach whether you like it or not on the last Sunday of 2018. All of that stuff will send you to hell. All that stuff will cause you to be lost. It's just as bad as taking a marble in your hands. It's just as bad as taking a Coors in your hands. It's just as bad as going out here and belling up to the bar and getting drunk and, and being not a witness for God, but something different. All of that is wrong, but so is the other. And what I'm preaching to you today, 
God has looked over our discrepancies, over our failures, over the things that we are struggling with. I want to tell you what's got to preach, be preached in this church. And you better hear me right now. There's got to be a spirit of forgiveness that comes through this body. There's got to be a spirit of forgiveness that comes to every heart in this house today. Because let me tell you, unforgiveness is a prison. And it will bind you up. And you won't ever get out. And you will live a life of misery. While the one that you're holding something against walks free. Hear this preacher on this Sunday morning. I'm telling you today, God sees where we are. But oh, we can walk in here. And if we want to get it right, His blood flows over us. His light shines upon us. His glory comes down. I'm feeling it today. I want to tell you, God is faithful in spite of me. You can go to hell over attitudes. It ain't popular, but it's true. I might need to dwell right here for a few minutes. Although I don't have no notes. I told my wife this morning I don't have no notes. I've got a couple of scriptures to read. But I'm going to preach them right here today. Because what I see is I see people that, that you, you, you know, you, you, you want to act like everything's good. And, and you want to act like everything's lovely and everything's kind. But you've got something down in here. You've got to get that out. And here's the good part. God loves you in spite of your mess. He loves you in spite of your junk. He loves you. He don't care where you've been. Listen to me right now. He don't care what you've said. He don't care how bad you've been. The, the worst murderer in the country can be saved. The worst alcoholic in America can go to heaven. The worst hater in America. Look, nobody hated worse than Paul. He helped the coats of those that stoned Stephen to death. He was a persecutor of the people of God. He hated the church. But guess what? If you let the mercies of God come, and you let the faithfulness of God come, and the grace of God come, He will set you free from all that stuff in your life. I'm here to tell you on this Sunday morning, He's not not worried about where you've been. He's worried about where you're going. He's not worried about what you've done. He's worried about what you're going to do. Somebody needs to understand that the mercies of God are new every morning. And the grace of God is flowing. And God is faithful to give it to us today. I'm man enough to stand here and tell you today my attitude isn't always right. Sometimes I say things I shouldn't say. Sometimes I get mad at things I shouldn't be mad at. Sometimes it, it takes me days to get it out. You do too. I'm dealing with old Dan all the time. My problem's not David Leach. He's my neighbor, but he's not my problem. My problem's not my mother. My problem's not David. My problem's not Justin. My problem's not Colton. My problem is me. I gotta get me right. But here's what I found out, and I just come to tell you this this morning. No matter how hard it is for me, every time I go to God, every time I go to God, it just seems to me like He's standing there with big old open arms. He said, come on. I said, I love you. It's okay. I love you. The Bible said in the book of Psalms, he remembered that they were flesh. He knows where you are today. There's some of you in this room today that you, you, you've told God, God, I don't know why you keep messing with me. Whoever wrote that song probably had the sentiment of our whole heart. Everybody in this room, when, when they wrote that song, I don't particularly like it, but it's, it's just a song. And it says, it's me again, Lord. I got a prayer that needs an answer. It's me again, Lord. Somebody say with me, it's me again, Lord. Have you ever went to God for the same thing over and over? Or is it just me? 
Am I the only one that has to do that? Am I the only one that has to say, God, look, I know I told you I wasn't going to do that. I told you I wasn't going to say that. I told you I was going to get my attitude right. I told you I was going to be better. But here I am in this mess again. I know y'all don't have to do that. But I have to do that. But I've never been to God one time that He hasn't been faithful to me. If there's ever a song, my mother said she wants to sing in her funeral, which will probably be in the next 20 years. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Does anybody feel that way today? Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, I have a provider. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Sing it with me. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, Thy hand has provided. Great is Thy faithfulness, Lord. I'll be 66 years old in May. Got the Holy Ghost when I was seven. Don't know anything but the church and living for God. I failed more times than I care to admit. Have I been perfect? Not by any stretch of the imagination. But I can tell you on this Sunday morning, 58 years of being filled with the Spirit of God, He's been faithful to me. He's brought me through every valley. He's answered so many prayers that I can't tell you all about them. He's healed my kids when they were sick. He's delivered us from the hand of death. Sealed my wife of incurable disease. He's been the best doctor I could have ever went to. He's been the best provider. I make no apologies for anything I have in life. Because I I want to tell you that God has been faithful to me. And he, he hasn't quit. He just keeps on. I marvel. I'm mystified. I don't even understand God. The omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God of eternity looks down on little old me. And He's been so faithful. He's been so faithful. He's been so faithful. So all I know to do is tell you on this last Sunday of 2018, I, I hadn't come to, to preach to you any hellfire and brimstone messenger. I just come to tell you as a witness, God is faithful. He is faithful. Is there anybody else in here that feels that way? Great is thy faith.
Okay, look at me. If God, you're in this room right now, and God has given you a new job, or He's blessed you financially, or He's given you a raise, whatever He's done, would you rise up where you are right now, and would you come stand right here? This is the first little group that God's been faithful to you. Look, look, look. I want you to see something. Because this affects us. This is who we are. This is what we do. This is, this is how good God is. Look at this. I want you to look at this. I want you to look at this. I want you to look at this. Come close. If you're in this building in, in 2018, God has healed you, kept you through a surgery, whatever. Would you come? Would you come stand with us today? You've been blessed. Your health has been blessed. Look at this. You're in this room today and God's answered a prayer for you. Anywhere in this room. Walk down here and stand with us. It's not a trick. We just give God the glory that He deserves this morning. I just, my heart is overflowing today. God's answered a prayer for you. Come close, everybody. Come on, ladies. Come close. Everybody get close. Come close. Come close. Has anybody here just been blessed? You just feel the favor of God. Just been blessed. It's been Sunday service. We're all here together. Just... See, see, all over this church. I can, I can go. I, I know it starts right there in that corner, Stephen. God's blessed you with that job. Blessed you. Blessed you and Beth for your family. I, Connie, I heard. I see you answer your prayers. I could, well, I could come right and around. I see. I know. I know because I'm your pastor. You confide in me. I'm not going to tell anything I shouldn't tell. But in this room, all all across here. Brother Robert, God's answered some prayers for you this year. God's answered some prayers. Brother Steve, God, we give Him glory. We give Him glory. What what other people don't make it through, you made it through. God took care of you. Ready? Gave you a better job this year. Gave you a, gave you a job here. Where you want to raise your family and your home is. God's good, isn't he? God's good, isn't he? I could go too. Y'all found this church. See how good God is. He ain't through with you yet either. Let me tell you, he's going to do a work for you like you wouldn't believe. You wouldn't believe. I'm just, I'm just looking as we go through here. Some of you financially, some of you healing, some of you just prayers answered. Ronnie. Where were you last year? Don't answer, but where were you last year? You told me yourself. You were at the bottom. You said, Preacher, I was in a shape. A few months ago, you was in a mess. But look, beautiful wife, godly home, church that loves you. God's faithful. God's greatest faithfulness. Greatest faithfulness. Connie, God's not through with Tommy. Are you? I'm so glad to see you back today. Her husband had open heart surgery. Tommy will rise again. He will sit on the pews of this church. Things are going to be good. We prayed for him and put it in God's hands. Look where God's brought you just in the last 12 months. And what God has done for you and your wonderful family. Amen. Oh, greatest, thy faithfulness, greatest, thy faithfulness, oh, morning, new mercies, new mercies, I see, oh, Greatest 
John the Revelator said this in the 19th chapter of the 11th verse. He said, I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. The faithful God of eternity is in this house today. And I, I don't, I'm not just trying to be nostalgic, and, but I want you to understand. I want you to understand. See, you don't even know I know this. Here's a man that decided he's going to go to work somewhere else. Blah, 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 blah. His boss said, no, 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 you're not. What happened, bro? Blessed. His boss said, no, you're not going anywhere else. He met all the other guys, deals and, and above expectation. See? Blessed. 2018. Has it been perfect? No. I've seen you go through a hard time, Daryl. I've seen you. I watched you. But boy, God's blessed you, hasn't he? He took care of all that. He never fails. Great is the faithfulness of God. If you don't remember anything else about 2018, this is my closing message to you. You remember how faithful God has been. Because you may have stumbled and you may have failed. And you may have not met the criteria of your own goals. But God, I just, in prayer this morning, oh, I got I just a minute here. In prayer this morning, I, I, was, I was just thanking God because, let me tell you something, folks. This is a shaky time. Nothing stable in America anymore. Nothing stable in the world anymore. I mean, you can't depend on anything. And if you've got a 401k, it ain't been good in the last few weeks and months. You read the reports and weep because you're thinking, ain't good. What are we going to do? Let me tell you what. What is good? God, who is faithful. God. And he's, look, quit worrying. You're a child of God. You're a child of the King. Everything is going to be all right. I read the back of the book. We win. Amen? You take the stock market and throw it in the ocean, and we're still going to win. We're still in charge here because God is our Heavenly Father. Do we worry about, oh yeah, it's normal to worry. It's normal. Hey, hey. You know, I'm, I'm that age, you see. I'm, I, I can't wait till May the 22nd. I'm getting every dime out of it. Uncle Sam, Dennis, I can get out of it. I saw something on Facebook that said, Sorry, Congressman, we didn't realize that Social Security and Medicare were entitlements. We've been paying for it for 50 years. It ain't no entitlement. They took our money. We get it back. And I'm going to get it back. I'm going far. But listen to me. If I don't get a dime, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. You can't depend on government. You can't depend on presidents. You can't depend on congressmen or senators or governors. You can't depend on city councilmen or mayors. You can't even depend on police chairmen. You can't depend on nobody anymore. But here's one stable thing in our life that is like the rock of Gibraltar. And it does not move. It will not move. It stays firm. And when you plant your feet there, it doesn't matter what else happens. What is going to happen is that we're going to sing, keep singing and keep rejoicing and keep praising because great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Thy great is thy faithfulness. 
Christ, we love you. And I want to stand in this church on December the 30th of 2018 and give glory and honor to your name for you have done things well. We have failed. We have been miserable failures at many times. We have not reached the goals that we want to reach. But Lord, thank you for loving us. And thank you for looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for standing by us when we didn't deserve it. Thank you for showing up, Lord, when we didn't show up. Thank you for being there when we asked you to be there, even though we weren't there when you asked us to be there. Thank you for the goodness of God and the mercies of God. Lord, we, we just, I just want to, I want to give you praise for this church and praise for the goodness of God. And as we step into a brand new year, Lord, I don't want us to forget the faithfulness of God and the goodness of God and the mercy of God and the grace of God. I want to thank you for it today. And we end our year in this church by saying, great is thy faithfulness. You are a faithful God, and we give glory and honor unto your name. Would you in this building, all over this house, put your hands in the air and just thank God for his faithfulness all over this place today. Thank you for what you've done, Lord. Thank you for blessing me, Lord. Thank you for seeing me through those trials. Thank you for every time you've been there. For the things, Lord, that I didn't even see that you took care of. Thank you for standing by me in the night. Thank you for taking me through the day. Thank you for keeping me another year. Thank you for blessing us in the house of God. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for spiritual things. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you, oh Lord, for the love of God that is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for mercy. Thank you for great grace. Thank you, God. We give you praise this morning. We end our year, Lord, in this house, giving you honor and giving you glory and giving you praise for you have brought us to where we are. Now, God, we thank you and we love you and we magnify you and we adore you today. In Jesus' name. And everybody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen.